So in this video, we'll import data from another sheet or import data from multiple sheets and we'll see what type of problems we could have and what could be some potential solution for those problems. So let's see what we have here. We have this tab. This is where we're going to import our data and we have this other sheets. There's this one that has just 2015 one tab and some data. And then there's also this other sheet that has two tabs, one 2016 tab, one 2017 tab. So I'm going to go ahead and start importing data from this sheet to this other file. So if you've ever done this before, you probably know you have to use a function called import range. Otherwise, if you don't, this will be the first time. So I'm going to start with equal sign and then import range. There's the function. So the first thing is my spreadsheet URL. It needs to be as a string, so it must be in quotes. So double quotes here. I'm going to go to this other tab where the file is. Now you could just simply just copy this, go back here and paste it right there. So include the entire URL. After I did that, I'm going to hit comma and then it says range string. So this is the range where my data is. So here it's from A1 through G13. So in quotes, because it's text, A1 through G13. So this range string must be text. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, hit enter. Now, once I do this, I get this reference error. And the reason for that is because I need to give access to that other sheet. So I'll go ahead and click allow access and that's going to allow access. So every first time you do this from one tab to another, you have to make sure you do this. So it gives you that window to basically give access. Now access to the spreadsheet now is going to stay. So if I try to import another range, let's say I just wanted to get these labels, I don't have to allow access every single time to the same spreadsheet. I can now just go and copy that URL again and type import range, quote, paste quote, comma, and then provide the range. So I'm going to say from A1 through C3. Hit enter. I don't have to do allow access anymore because I already gave permission. One thing you have to keep in mind is that this permission is going to stay on as long as the user who clicked on that allow access still has permission to edit this file. So once you remove that user from one of the people who are managing this file, that's it. That access is going to stop. Then you will have to give permission again as a different user. So let's go back here. I'm going to delete this. Let's see. So a couple of things here. So the first thing is that when you copy and paste the URL, it gives you this long text. Now, another option is to just use the ID of your spreadsheet. The ID of your spreadsheet is actually inside of this URL. So if you pay attention from here through after this D slash, that's the first part. So after that, you have the ID that follows. So I'm going to delete that part. And then there is going to be this other slash and we also don't need that part after that. So the URL is between those two slashes. You can just use URL. If it's too complicated for you to do this, then just use the whole link. So going back, this is my import range. So now I said A1 through G13. So what could go wrong with this? The problem with this reference is that I didn't actually say which tab this range is coming from, from the other file. So I was importing that range from here, right? So that's my 2017 data. Now by default, import range is going to import everything from your first tab. So if somebody goes to this tab and adds a new sheet here and they start entering some data or not enter data, it doesn't really matter. At this point, if I go back to my import range, see it changed. So now, this one is our first sheet and that's what we're importing. So for that reason, it's always a good practice. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that to refer to the name of the tab. 
back and here the name of the tab was called 2017 so before I do the range I'll do single quote 2017 single quote again and exclamation sign so this is your tab name in single quotes whatever the tab is called and then exclamation sign and then the range so if I hit enter now this should import everything from 2017 now if I go back here and add a tab start typing go back see it doesn't interfere because I did a full reference with my tab name great I'm gonna go back and delete this that's one thing now when you're importing ranges you don't have to import the entire range you could just import from D2 through D13 so if I go back here I'm gonna change this D2 through D13 and now we're just importing our numbers and then I can just put this entire function inside of a sum function if necessary so you can use import range inside a function as if it was a regular range hit enter so that's my total so as a result of this if you go back and add a new number here let's say we're adding another let's do 20,000 so we can see it. we go back this is not gonna update because well we said from D2 through D13 so you can just remove that last row reference so it will start from D2 and go all the way down in D column keep in mind that this will also include blanks in the bottom but that shouldn't be a problem for us because we're doing a simple sum so I'm gonna hit enter and if I go back and add another number it will automatically not update so let me delete this so let's say what I want to do I want to get my total sales for Illinois and California in this tab so I'll just type IL CA so I'm gonna do equals so I can't use some ifs for this because when you're dealing with different sheets some ifs doesn't work some ifs will only work in your current spreadsheet so for that reason I'm going to use a function called some product open my parentheses so I'm going to first start with my range of numbers that I'm trying to sum up so that comes from here so I'm gonna copy that link and that's all of the sales from D2 and all the way down right so I'm gonna do import range open quote paste the URL comma again and then quotes again D 2 D close parentheses now because I already did use import range function before I can just go ahead and type some product and use my import range function right inside of this function but if this is the first time you use import range you cannot do this this is not going to work because first you have to just use the import range function by itself and give permission now I already gave permission so that's not a problem for me now this gets really long really fast if you use the whole URL and this is why I prefer to just use the ID so I'm gonna just go until here and delete this I'm gonna also remove the second part again you can leave that on and that's my import range that will give me the range of numbers we're trying to sum up now I'm gonna do comma and then I'm gonna do the range where I'm gonna check if it's Illinois or not so that's G2 all the way down so because it was the same file I just copy paste the same thing and I'm gonna just replace this with G and in this range we need to make sure that that's Illinois so I'm gonna say equals this close my parentheses hit enter that should be my total for Illinois and then I can drag this down get my total for California the reason I can actually do this dragging down is because when you drag down this import range function this references don't work as an actual range so usually with ranges you have to lock them because if you drag it down it's gonna move now this is not gonna change because it's text so this just works 
So let's just go check Illinois 138. So let's see if that's accurate. Oh, yeah, sales 138. That's right. And California says 586. So let's see how many Californias we have. Oh, so we have just one each. Maybe we should have used a different state. So let's do this one. So 963. So that's this plus this plus this plus this and plus this. So there it is. All the way down here, 96303. Same number. That's good. We get our totals. So the idea is that you could take that range and use it as a range inside of a different function, like some, some product, something else. Now let's see what are some potential problems with import range. So I'm going to just copy this function. I'm going to do equals and paste it. So this is my column of sales from here through here. What could go wrong with this? So if somebody goes to this tab and they decide, well, you know what? I'm just going to add a new column. What's going to happen is, see, our formulas fail here and they also fail over here because what happened is that we said our range is coming from D2 and D, basically D column. Now, because we add a new column that shifted and now our sales is E. So let's see what could be a potential way to fix this. Whether you should fix it or not, it really depends on the size of data. So if you have very large files, it might be best to just leave it the way it is and just manage those columns. If someone adds a column, go fix it, right? But if it's a manageable size of data set, what you could do, you could go by the label of the column. What I'm going to do in my import range function, instead of including this column D, I'm going to say my range of data is going to be from A2 all the way through, and I'll use some column, let's say age. So now I went from A2 through here. If I'm thinking that we might be adding a lot of columns that I may go all the way to, let's say column S or column T, right? So let's actually do that. And that's all the way there. So what can we do to get our sales? So we want to be able to dynamically find our sales where it is and extract it. And to do that, what we're going to do, well, let's take it step by step. So I'm going to just copy this import range function and I'll just paste it here. And what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to use import range for just my labels. So that's going to be from A1 through the same column, which is T, T1. And that will just import my labels, which is the first row in that other tab separately. So in this range, I'm going to do a search. So I'm going to cut that function and use a function match. So I'm going to use the function match and the search key is going to be state because I'm going to be searching for that column state comma the range I'm searching it in is going to be that import range function comma and this is an exact match so zero hit enter that says that's column seven so one two three four five six seven perfect so we find the state now we really wanted sales right not state so it should be column number four so i'll go back and instead of state i type sales and we get column number four that's good now what we need to do we need to use this information that says column number four to just get the column number four from here. So we're going to take this entire import range function. I'm going to do command X to cut it or control X. And then you will go ahead and start with your function index. And in index function, the first thing is the range. So I'm going to just paste that range comma. Now the next thing is the row, which row do we want from that range? So if I just type three and close this, See, it's going to give me the third row in that range. So it should be 
this one. And it is. So, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is this. So I don't want the row. So I'm going to skip the row by doing a comma. And then I want the column. Remember, we wanted the column number four. So I'm going to type four for now, hit enter. And you will see how that gets us all of our sales numbers over here. Now, what we need to do, we need to just go back and update this. So I'm going to go here and copy this match function without the equal sign, hit escape, go back to my formula. And instead of hard coding four in my formula, I'm going to remove that four and paste my match function. I'm going to hit enter. And that gives me the same results. So this I don't need anymore. I'm going to delete it. So what's different about this now is that if I go back now and add columns, this will still work because it's going to go and find the sales column automatically, figure out which column it is and extract it. And now we have our column of values. Now we can just go ahead and put this in our sum function or really any other function. And that should give us our sum of sales. So now it's working more dynamically by finding the column and getting that column from our range. Now, if you don't want to hard code sales in this formula, you could just say, well, I'm going to have this label here, sales, or you could type it here, doesn't matter, wherever it's going to be. And in your formula, instead of just saying match sales, you could say match this. I'm going to hit enter. So that gives me the total. So now if I just come back here, let me actually delete this and this. So if I go back, you should see it's the same thing, same number. But if I change that label to this one, it should automatically now go find that column and get me the total. Now I could do both. Drag that down my sales and cost of goods and I'm getting it using the column label now obviously this time if somebody changes the label of the column that will stop working too right so if somebody goes and types here sale it's not a match anymore so now you have the label problem so you'll have to decide which way you want to tackle this